Hi there, Wayne Jennings here with another little action camera to review. Today, we're looking at the Ape Man A87. This is a small, lightweight action camera uh, capable of shooting 4K up to 60 frames per second. It'll do time lapse, it'll do still images up to 20 megapixels, and it'll do slow motion at up to 240 frames per second. And it costs around $100, so it's not very expensive. But at that price point, is it any good? Well, let's put it to the test. I'm just getting ready to head out my kayak here for an early morning paddle. So I'm gonna take the Ape Man A87 along with me. It's a great camera because it's small and compact. And the fact that it has this waterproof housing makes it ideal for this kind of situation where you're heading out in a canoe, a kayak, going fishing, or just anywhere where you're near the water. The Ape Man A87 action camera will record video in resolutions of 720 at 60 frames per second, 1080 at 30 and 60 frames per second, 2.7K at 30 frames per second, and 4K video at 30 or 60 frames per second. It will take photos in sizes of 3, 5, 12, 16, or 20 megapixels. This lightweight action camera weighs in at a mere 2.3 ounces, that's about 65 grams, and it retails for around $99 US. The camera comes with this handy storage case. Just unzip it to open it up and you'll see that everything is neatly organized for easy access. Now when we spread it all out, you can see that this camera comes with a lot of extras. In addition to the camera itself, you get this underwater housing, which is rated to a depth of 40 meters. 
that's 131 feet. Now, you also get this spare back door for the housing, but you do not want to use this underwater because it has these little slots here. That allows you to take a strap and run it through, and then that way you can attach it to a tree or a branch or a fence post or something like that. The camera also comes with this snap-on frame, which features a top and bottom metal tripod socket, and there's this little spring-loaded clip device, which will slide into the back of the frame. You get two rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, rated at 1,050 milliamp hours, and there's a USB cable for charging. There's a nice assortment of GoPro compatible mounting brackets and two quick release plates along with extra adhesive tape. It comes with a two button remote control mounted to a wrist strap. You get a variety of fasteners to help secure your camera and there is a multi-language user manual. They even supply a small lens cleaning cloth. The Aikman A87 comes in this nice waterproof housing and it appears to be pretty well built. It seems pretty sturdy. What I like about this is it's got a nice big latch so it's easy to grip and it has this little safety switch on here so you can't accidentally open it. You got to slide that switch before you can release the latch so that's a nice feature to see. And it's got a nice big o-ring around the back here to keep everything dry and the camera just slides out like so. Uh, it's a your basic action camera kind of follows the design of most little action cameras here. It's a black plastic material um, and it's got this kind of rubberized coating around the top and side so it makes it easy to grip. The front of course is dominated by the wide angle lens and beside it is the main power button. Nice bright orange so it's easy to see. So let's check out some of the features of the camera on the bottom. First off, I'm kind of disappointed to see there is no tripod socket. I really don't understand that. I think every camera should come with a tripod socket. Oh well. Now beside it here, uh, this is the door that covers the battery compartment. And you just kind of slide this little button here and it kind of pops open and comes off like so. Uh, the only thing about it is it does come right off. So you could easily lose this. I don't know why that's not hinged, uh, but it just snaps back on once you push that in. Now, the camera does come with a spare back door in case you lose it. But again, it, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. It should be hinged in the first place, so there's no chance of losing it. Uh, on the side here, we have our ports. There's your USB port and your HDMI port and that's where your micro SD card plugs in. Uh, it's not covered so um, dust, dirt, moisture could get in there. You know that's kind of disappointing to see also. It should have some kind of cover on the side there. Uh, flipping around to the far side we have a couple up and down buttons um, that are used if you're not using the touch screen or to activate the Wi-Fi and there's a little tiny speaker down in the bottom there. Uh, now on the very top is your main shutter release button, a little LED beside there that lights up when you have Wi-Fi connection. So we're just going to power it up here. You just push that and hold it for a second. There you go. And you can see the uh, two inch touch screen on the back here. Uh, you notice in the bottom left, there's this little video camera icon. Uh, that's obviously in the video mode. And if you touch that, you can go in and make a few selections, uh, normal video or time lapse or do loop recording or slow motion, things like that. Uh, if you want to go to photo mode, just swipe from the side and that video icon turns into a camera icon. So just sliding from the side switches from photo to video. Now, and here we are in the video mode. You see the bottom tells you your resolution. If you hit that button, you can go in and change the resolution. Right now it's at 1080p, um, but you can start at 720, 1080, 2.7, 4K. And you can also change the frame rate. Again, if you touch that, you get the selection on the bottom. So 40, or sorry, 60 or 30. And again, depending what um, resolution you're in, like in 1080, you have more options. You can do 120 frames, 60 frames, 30 frames. 
so that's fairly easy to use. Uh, there's another button down here, this little M for manual. If you click that, you can go in and there's some automatic settings or manual settings you can adjust, like your exposure, your white balance, things like that. There's another uh, set of menu. If you flip down from the top here, you have these icons. You can turn the Wi-Fi on, uh, turn your audio on or off. Um, this will allow you to put a timestamp on and you can, of course, lock it so you don't accidentally uh, change your settings, but if you hit preferences here You can go in and now you can make more choices. You can turn the stabilization on um, Change the aspect ratio there um, Change the frequency uh, you know, Various things here. Oops. There you go uh, Turn the screensaver power saver off uh, format the camera time stamp things like that So you can go in and make the appropriate changes that you need so it's a fairly responsive uh, touchscreen, works pretty good. All right, so now it's time for a little audio test on the 8-man A87. Now, right now, I'm using this. This is a digital audio recorder with a plug-in microphone. I basically use this on all my productions so that you can hear what good sound sounds like. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it recording. Then you hear my voice as the camera picks it up, and you can compare the two. So I'll stop it right now. Okay, that has been turned off. What you're hearing now is my voice as the camera picks it up. Now it's a calm day here. I'm not far away, literally at arm's length. That's about a meter. And I find this camera actually does, you know, a pretty good job of recording my voice. However, it tends to record at a low level, which means when I go to edit it, I have to boost it somewhat. <laughs> In addition to shooting video in multiple resolutions, this camera also does a pretty nice job at capturing still photos. You can shoot images in sizes of 3, 5, 12, 16, or 20 megapixels. There is a self-timer mode, a burst photo mode, and there's a long exposure setting for those nighttime shots. I was very impressed with the time-lapse videos recorded by this camera. You can set the camera to record a single frame of video every one, three, or 10 seconds. This camera has an extreme wide angle lens. It covers a 170 degree angle of view. The problem is those really wide angle lenses tend to distort. If you notice the horizon behind me, it's higher in the center and it curves down on the edges. It's kind of that fisheye look. Well, this camera has a lens distortion correction function. That's turned off right now, but I'll turn it on and you can see how it will level out the horizon. All right, so I've turned the lens distortion correction feature on. And as you can see from the horizon behind me, things are a lot straighter, so it kind of gets rid of that fisheye look. Some other settings available on this camera include exposure compensation, allowing you to adjust the exposure up or down by two stops in half stop increments. You can leave the white balance on auto or set it to cloudy, daylight, incandescent or fluorescent. The ISO is automatic in video mode, but in photo mode, it can be set to auto, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, or as high as 3200 ISO. This camera does have a feature known as an electronic image stabilizer. However, that is turned off right now. I just want to show you how the camera records in normal mode. I'm just walking down this forest path, uh, holding the camera at arm's length on a selfie stick. So what I'll do is I'll go back, retrace my steps, turn the image stabilizer on, and then you can compare the two shots. Okay, so I've gone back, retraced my steps. I'm walking over the same terrain. This time, the electronic image stabilizer has been switched on. And as you can see, it's smoothed things out uh, somewhat. Maybe not as good as, say, using a, a powered gimbal, but it uh, definitely helps with these kind of handheld walking shots. There are two slow motion settings on this camera. 
You can shoot 1080 video at 120 frames per second, giving you a four times slow motion effect. And you can also shoot 720 video at 240 frames per second, allowing you to achieve an eight times slow motion effect. And you can get some interesting underwater shots like this one when the camera is inside the underwater housing. The 8-man A87 can also be used remotely with the included remote control. Now this is really simple. There are just two buttons on here. If you press the white button, the camera will start recording video until you hit it again. If you hit that little orange button, the camera will snap a still picture. But for more versatility, you want to download uh, the app to your smartphone or tablet. That way you're connected by Wi-Fi, you have more control, and you'll see on your phone exactly what the camera sees. So that's the best way to go using the camera remotely. Now to sum up, uh, for a camera that costs around $100, it does a pretty good job. I was very impressed with almost all the video, one exception being the slow motion. Uh, that was just a little too soft for my liking. Um, but uh, overall, the video, especially at uh, 1080, 2.7, and 4K were really nice and sharp. Normally I shoot at a higher resolution uh, at 4K and then I edit at 1080. So that way you have more versatility as far as cropping or zooming in on the image. And this does a really nice job at 4K. Nice color, uh, no dropouts, uh, really, really nice looking image. Um, there was a few disappointments with the actual physical camera itself. The fact that there's no tripod socket is disappointing. Uh, the fact that it's got that little battery door that comes off, that's really disappointing. I think that's going to be, unfortunately, an easy thing to lose. And it'd be nice if there was like a, an LED on the front so that when I'm, you know, recording, I can actually see that the camera's recording. I'm not guessing uh, that I hit record or didn't I? So, you know, a few little things like that that could make the camera itself a little bit better. But as far as the performance, um, it does really nice time lapse, does nice still pictures. And like I say, the 2.7 and the 4K video were very impressive. So considering that $100 price range, uh, the quality of the video produces not a bad little camera to consider.